afternoon, good evening, everyone. You're tuned in to Holler to Success Scholar. I'm the Success Scholar, Haki Shakur Ami. Thank you all for tuning in, listening in uh, to this wonderful, wonderful broadcast here. Thank you all for tuning in. First, I want to uh, thank uh, last week we had a wonderful, wonderful guest, uh, Attorney Malik Zulu Shabazz, joined us on live here, calling in, uh, of course. So I got a wonderful show, got a wonderful show lined up. Uh, definitely want to mention condolences to those who lost their life in Vegas uh, just this morning, I believe. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's just unfortunate reality of the days that we live in. Uh, so I just say be vigilant in terms of understanding your environment and keeping awareness. You know, you got to stay sharp out here. So um, we're going to have a conversation about black wealth. I mean, and, and and wealth in general, of course, one of my favorite topics, one that needs to be discussed a lot more, of course. And I have in the studio with me, my brother William Murray. How you doing, my brother? And uh, yeah. thank you for the opportunity. And, uh, yeah. you know, you're talking about one of my favorite subjects. It's okay. not the fact that it's about money, because money, yeah. wealth ain't always money. Cause, you know, your health <laughs> is your greatest wealth. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well de definitely, definitely, brother. And just... Um, and just to let everybody know, this what was a Saturday. I was in Baltimore at the Reginald F. Lewis Museum, and uh, you know I usually have copies of, of his book. So we're going to talk about uh, Reginald F. Lewis' book, "Why White Guys Have All the Fun." One of the best books yeah. I've ever read. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've got a library to put most libraries to shame, wow. and yeah. that book is one of the top. I would say one of my top ten books oh, of all the b great books I've read. Ah, beautiful, beautiful. Must read, yeah, must, absolutely. must read. Absolutely, absolutely. And this gentleman, who's around campus CEO, Dr. Randall Pickett. Oh, I didn't show it up there, Dr. Randall Pickett's book. And this is campus CEO. I highly recommend for various college students, of course. And, uh, you know. But the thing about really him, good. if you ever get a chance mm -hmm. to hear him speak, yeah. do not pass up that opportunity. That young brother, well, I don't say young brother, <laughs> to me, right. but that brother, man, is brilliant. He is yeah. truly, yes, truly yes. brilliant. And this is his other one. I'm not sure which, I think this one came first and this one came second, but black uh, faces and, and white, white places. places. Yes. So this is uh, his second book, and he's, I know he's working on a, another one. And this is a local giant, and I recall I did not get a chance to complete the conversation uh, you know, a few weeks ago in the D.C. area where they were talking about gentrification. And, you know, I didn't mention uh, Don or Hugh Peebles. You, you know about yes, that? Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah. So he has the largest uh, black-owned real estate right. company in maybe the world, but certainly in the United States. So I, I saw something on that. So um, uh, definitely, definitely these are, are some, of the, some of the, you know, books that I'm going to read as I get my notes out and prepare, but I went to a, uh, you know, a wealth diversity uh, workshop at the Reginald F. Lewis Museum, and I got this recent, this report, and this is um, based upon, um, you know, some studies in terms of the differences between, now this is a little small 30 page thing, and um, I'll just hold it up, and uh, what's his name? Several people, Dietrich Mohammed uh, was passing these out. He was one of the presenters there. There are several other individuals. I'm sorry, I don't have the names of the different individuals there, but I recall uh, we talked briefly, he and I, about Thomas Shapiro that wrote the book Black Wealth, White Wealth. Right. Mm -hmm. But this is a report. Uh, but I'll, I'll just start a little bit with that talk about the, the racial wealth divide in the middle class. Let me, let me see where I wanted to, well, let me just open up here. In, the, in our 2016 report, the ever-growing gap without change, African-Americans and Latino families won't match white wealth for centuries. We showed that if the current trends continue, it will take 228 years for the average black family to reach the, the, the level of wealth of white families own today. For the average Latino family, matching the wealth of white families, it will take 84 years. Um, you, you know, there's a reason. Here, here, here's what we've got to learn to understand. That's the reason I, I, I tell people, start working on building a legacy. Mm -hmm. See, a legacy is when you your business is doing well enough 
where you can take care of your, your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren. Mm. See, once you start get the third generation, fourth generation, that's when you have old money. Mm -hmm. But right now, we're working on having our first generation of money. Mm -hmm. So we have new money. Mm. Now, now your, 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 your people who've got generational wealth, mm -hmm. that's old money. Right. So we're just starting on our new money because we have people now that's got an opportunity to become wealthy and some are millionaires, but they still have new money. So that means after them, if they pass, can the other generation have the business that will help grow them, that they can grow where they can pass it on to their children and then their children. See, once you get your, like I say, your third generation and your fourth generation of your money, your mm -hmm. business, mm -hmm. and then you have old money. Mm -hmm. Right, right, yeah, yeah, I feel you, I feel you on that. Good comments. Let me find this little part that I, that I said I saw in here. Okay, I don't know where it is. Okay, well, there, there, here it is. For, uh, here, this is what I want to read. For several years, politicians, researchers, journalists, and the public have focused their attention on a growing economic inequality. In the United States, most often this focus is on income, i.e. the wages earned from a job or from capital gains, rather than on wealth, i.e. the sum of one's assets minus their debts. Income inequality, while stark, pales in comparison to the vast economic divide exposed by examining the wealth disparities. For example, a recent study by the Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development found that while the top 10% of income earners in the United States receive almost 3% of the nation's income, the wealthiest 10% own an astounding 76% of the country's wealth. That means that less than a quarter of the nation's wealth is left at the bottom 90% of the American population. So, yeah, Brother Marvin, indeed. Thank you. Thank you. So, I'm going to... Um, Can I comment on something like that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, here's the thing about the whole thing when you're talking about... People are talking. About, see, people looking at their income, right, and saying, "Well, I'm making, I'm making good money. I'm making seventy, eighty, hundred thousand, hundred fifty, two hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. But and then you got businesses out there that's selling up to a million dollars of a year. Mm -hmm. But see, they fail to realize it's not how much money you make, right, right. It's how much money you keep. Indeed. Indeed. And yes, they don't really know, well, I'm making $150,000. Yeah, but how much are you keeping? Mm -hmm. If you're living to the level of your income right. or or you have a charge card and you're in debt, then you're living above your means. You have to learn to live below your means, and the rest is what you keep. Mm -hmm. And until we learn to start looking at how much we're keeping, not how much we're making or how much we have, then we're still going to be at right. the bottom of the barrel. Right, all right. So I'm going I'm to get into Reginald F. Lewis. I mean, of course, he's from Baltimore. There's a museum named after him. This is more new, newest book, and you can, you know, holler at me if, if anybody is interested in getting copies. This is a 2012 um, edition. So I just wanted to, you know, some of the people that actually uh, had opinions about Reginald F. Lewis. And usually when I do a book review, I kind of would you know, read the chapters, maybe an excerpt of it, uh, or something like that. So um, I'm just going to read first. Uh, Kenneth Shawnot, I believe is his name, Chairman of American Express to Quality. Uh, I most admired about Reggie was that he was constantly coming up with big uh, ideas, and he was able to execute those big ideas and transform his dreams into reality. Reggie wanted to be successful and pursue his dreams. He also had the opportunity and the gift to be able to reflect on some of what he achieved. So that's just opening for, uh, for uh, Kim, Kim Chestnut. Now, actually, Don Peebles, uh, who, this book, we're going to talk about him too. I remember once watching a televised broadcast of one of Reggie F. Lewis's speeches after he accepted one of many awards and listening as he emphasized that his success was based primarily upon his performance, not his color. And I thought to myself, it didn't matter what color he was. There was no affirmative action, no equal opportunity for him. He simply had to perform. He had to be better. Reginald Lewis was more than an entrepreneur. He was a man who was up to the challenge of breaking barriers. 
He recognized the importance of great opportunity and had uh, to be transform transformation. He had to be a transformational figure by inspiring a whole new generation of entrepreneurs and ushering a different business environment uh, in our country. That's been a true business leader, a phase so often used inappropriately. All right, so what you think about that, Ryder? I'll just open with those. You, you, you know, uh, like I say, that is one of my top books on my list of all the books, hundreds of books I've read. Mm -hmm. That That is a book that is a must read. You know what I liked about Reginald Lewis? I think I read his book when it first came out in the 80s. Mm -hmm. And what I liked about it, he showed that you don't settle. He refused to take no for an answer. Mm -hmm. He go to a bank and says, okay, I want to borrow... 150000 and they would tell him no. Mm -hmm. He would go back again a little later, and that time he'd ask for 200000 Right, yeah. And they oh would God. tell him no. <laughs> when yeah, he came yeah. back again, he'd ask for 300000 He never wow. asked for less on the second go-round wow. than he did on the first. Wow. <laughs> that, so he refused to take no. Yeah, yeah. And he wow, ended up deep. getting the larger amount of money. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Wow, wow, that's like... Making them pay, like, all right, you don't want to give me now. I, I'm gonna take more. That's right. I'm gonna take more. So <laughs> don't take no for an answer, and don't yeah. lower, and don't lower your dreams. Yes, sir. If yes, your sir. dreams mm -hmm. don't scare you, mm. then they aren't big enough. Wow, wow, wow. You know, wow. I, I'm I'm not talking about me, but I'm gonna talk about me. <laughs> My dreams. I'm building a dream right now because you know I just made. I will tell you, I just made a move. Right, right, right. You know, I moved my institute, the yes, million dollar master, my institute uh -huh. from Laurel to now. I moved it to D.C. as of yesterday. Mm -hmm. And the dream, because I moved it to D.C., mm -hmm. is so much larger, man. I'll be honest with you, man. Excuse me, it's scaring the hell out of me. <laughs> All right. But it's great that it is. Yes, sir. Because yes. now I have got to do like Reginald did. Just keep going back, asking for more. Mm. I'm not right. going to lower my dream. I'm going to make it larger. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to let no no t turn me around, turn me down. Right, right, right. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful. Absolutely, brother. So I I, I just want to you know give people a little bit more, and then we can get into. Uh, now he was what people don't realize. Next. Yeah, he was ahead. the first black billionaire. Right, right, right. Billionaire. Right. Yes, sir. Now yes, sir. he he started he learned business, and, and the man was brilliant. I mean, when I say he's brilliant. This is a book you must read if you want to learn about business yeah, and how to yeah. build and grow a business right. and what it takes. And you must have the mindset mm -hmm. and the power in your mind not to let nothing turn you around mm -hmm. because he refused and he bought business after business after mm -hmm. business. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, interesting. And, uh, and what some people fail to mention, but, you know, of course, those that are in the know know he was uh, from Baltimore. I wrote a couple Baltimore, of Baltimore, uh, That's right. He uh, went to Dunbar High School. Yeah. Went to uh, Morgan. Did he go to Morgan? I can't recall, I, but. I, I moved to Tennessee. 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 Okay. Tennessee. I know he worked he in Baltimore for a law firm. Tennessee State, I believe. Went to Tennessee State? I okay. He moved okay. State. I read it some years ago. And right, I know yeah, he I worked. It's been so long. I remember just the, the right. power part of the book. Right. That man is powerful. Right, right. And he worked for Piper and Murray. Um, and he rose through the law firm. He was one of the top. Money makers. Well, actually, that that was during an internship at, at when he was still in law school, and he said, and I was, you know, just going through how while in law school he was, you know, last year law students they had prepared, and he went uh, directly um, and had a practice, but it was a partnership. But he didn't do it in Baltimore. He started in New York. Right. So that I mean, was, yeah. was really. But you know, one thing that he did that, that mm -hmm. was really really great. As brilliant as he was, and that man was a brilliant man, mm -hmm. he he would never let no one with less education or someone didn't know as much as him, he wouldn't let them belittle him to a point of where he would think less. Mm. Wow. He, 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 uh, when he went to borrow money and told him no, he knew he was smarter than them, but he didn't hold it against them. Yeah, yes. All right, Jamar, Jamar Creese just mentioned how he was a corporate lawyer, right? He turned into a venture capitalist. Right, my, right, right, and 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 that's the thing with, uh, you know, understanding you know the, the 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 markets in the sense of of knowing how to partner, for instance. And some people mentioned some of these things, you know, at the museum, uh, you know, being more of an entrepreneur in a sense, like not just 
a solopreneur. You right, know, right, sense, but, right. But but leveraging established uh, institutions, for instance, uh, institutions that, that that have been around, they have a track record and attraction in the market, and leveraging uh, the in the influence as well as the, the institutional power and the caches that they already have. Well, yeah. being where you are right now and, and growing your ideas and your, your businesses mom. does mm -hmm. not mean that's where you're going to end up because he didn't go out to be a venture capitalist mm. at first. He didn't, mm -hmm. he didn't go to be that. Right. But he grew into that. Yeah, yeah. So where you start does not mean where you're going to end up wow. because look at me. I, end, I started out a street vendor. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And some 40 years later, I'm the president of the Millionaire Mastermind Institute. Right. Well, right. I didn't start out as a street vendor to be the president and the owner of an institute. Mm -hmm. But look at where all of my experiences and years of different businesses mm -hmm. has led me. Wow, wow, wow. That's beautiful, that's beautiful. So that was like Reginald Lewis, where he, where he started out and where he ended up. Mm -hmm. But it was all for the better as he went along this journey great. that grew him and gave him a larger universe to conquer. Great, great, great. All right, yeah. So that that's some good stuff. Um, I had a lot of little stuff in here that uh, that he that he did in, in terms of law school and how his work ethic was. Uh, a lot of people talked about his work ethic and you know just how his standard of excellence was you know just above par. Well, you know so, he emphasized he emphasized that he was not a black businessman. Mm -hmm. He was a businessman that was black. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, Which is yeah. a difference. Right, it's right, a right. tremendous difference. Yeah. Than saying you're a black business person rather than a person who in that business happens to be black. Mm -hmm. And you know what's interesting, and this is where, you know, I mean, and, and, and I feel even, for instance, you know, I always, <laughs> when people want to label you, you know, like, all right, you, you're a speaker, you're, you're, you're an author, or, you know, and I'm just like, look, I mean, I, you know, you, you can't stay still. You know, if you uh, are growing, you know that there's limits. For instance, and, and this is what this is what he understood. You know, it's like that, that you can only talk to so many people. Um, uh, but you know, eventually, you know, you have to learn. You know, certain business uh, principles. You uh, can't right. let your title be you. Right. Amen. You know, Amen. because you're an author doesn't make you. That's it. Right, right. Because right. You, 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 you know, you own a business. That's, that, that's it. No, yeah. it's not. Yes, sir. Because you are a human being first. And if your attitude and your gratitude are not right, I don't care who or what you are. Right. Yeah. Let me, let me just, uh, before we get on to, to Brother Peebles, I wanted to spend 20 minutes on each, uh, each of these three great giants. Uh, there are several individuals in this book that wrote more of a you know, forward, if you will, comment type of endorsement of the book. But let me read through some some of the chapter uh, titles. Uh, Kid from East Baltimore, uh, and that, that's what they call it, L uh, Lewis Demon Work Ethic. <laughs> Demon <laughs> Work Ethic. The high school years, his high school at Dunbar, I think he played uh, football star, uh, quarterback, football team. Uh, he said, I'm going to be a millionaire. He said that at Virginia State. That was chapter title. No application needed. Breaking down the barriers, breaking down the doors of Harvard Law. Yeah, that was interesting. I, and I believe I was. I'm not sure if he was the president of that law review, but um, uh, which, which President Obama, former President Obama, uh, was. But building his own law practice. That's a chapter in the book. The years of struggle. Interesting. Masterful man, uh, winning his wife, uh, Leota Nicholas. And then a chapter I, I was not ready. Then talk about Drexel, and then the the, the McCall uh, deal, the piloting McCall ninety to one, leveraging a, a deal. And then the biggest deal of all, the billion dollar uh, right. LBO um, of Beatrice when he bought Beatrice. Right. And they said that it was impossible that he couldn't do it. Mm. When they told him that he couldn't do it, they told the wrong one, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah. to read, I mean, I'm serious. You've got just, I mean, yeah, I yeah. can't praise that book enough. Right, I'm, right, I'm right. truly serious. Yes, sir. It yes, is sir. that great of a book. I know. We, we could probably spend an hour on Yeah, man, just talking about watching enough, white but, guys uh, have all the fun. Yeah, yeah. So just everybody, that's what the first book 
that I wanted to, you know, touch bases with uh, and touch upon is Watch the White Guys Have All the Fun. I read it, you know, maybe some years ago. So um, now, when he passed, he was just fifty. I think fifty-two. Yes, yes, yes. And he yes, brought, yes. he died from a brain cancer, if I remember yeah, right. right. Correct, correct, yeah. Yes. That, that's, so. that's correct. So I don't, maybe it may have been an aneurysm. Yes. Uh, next one on the list, we're going to go in order from our ancestor, our great ancestor, to the elder of uh, our last two artists. And this is Donahue Peebles. For those who may not know, uh, the Peebles Principal, uh, he... Uh, was and operated in the Baltimore, I'm sorry, no, D.C. area. Okay. Let me just read his um, brief bio. At the, to the age of 19, Donahue Peebles entered the business jungle with no resources beyond his native smarts, decent education, I'm sorry, a decent education and powerful drive to succeed. Seven years later, he became a multimillionaire. Today, with a net worth of a quarter of a billion dollars now, According to some numbers, this book was written some time ago, so... He's worth more than 250 million now. <laughs> right. You're talking about 250 million yeah. plus. Yeah. He commands a real estate empire stretching from the boulevards of Washington, D.C. To, to sparkling beaches of Miami, to the glitzing strips of Las Vegas. I didn't know that. Mm, he owns hotels. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All these major hotels. Right. How, he, how did this determined young entrepreneur achieve such spectacular success so quickly? Can others learn his secrets and emulate his accomplishments, can you? Part of the deal, I'm sorry, part of, part the art of the deal, part why should white guys have all, all the fun? <laughs> He's talking about uh, the Donald Trump uh, book, Art of the Deal. The Peebles Principle distills the lessons Mr. Peebles has learned on his journey from congressional page, because he started with working with, uh, with uh, Conyers, John Conyers, as a page, um, to CEO of the largest black on real estate development firm in the nation. This Chris Street for principles can help any motivated entrepreneur get from dirt poor to fil the filthy rich in a hurry. In entertaining first person accounts of his most important deals, Peebles reveals how each transaction required him to find new resources within himself to ensure his success. its success. Though this process, he discovered variable principles that would aid him in all of his future endeavors. Some lessons are motivational, and inspirational. Many are uh, Harbor business how to's that apply in any industry and any type of transaction. So uh, it's very informative. Let me kind of browse through some of uh, these chapters here from ground zero to the first deal. Um, and I'll just elaborate knowing that he had a um, more of a, uh, what was it? Received from a business tax. Um, did I write it down? I'll, I'll look it up. But let me just, just go through this first. Uh, his first deal, and then they talk about the Washington Marriott, mm -hmm. North Capitol Street, and, and then he talk about the Marion Bray stigma uh, that, you know, they had. But I'll read a little bit. I'm not going to try to now, read. Does he still own thing. that Mar that Marriott down on 8th Street, Northwest? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if he... Because I know yeah. it, 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 I think that was the one that he had. Uh, I can't remember exactly. All right. Let's, let's, let's just give some principles. The, the basic for success in any business are threefold. Learn the industry. Learn the industry. Right? You can't go into something you don't know. Right? Get into the mix and go forward in full, full of confidence. But that only takes you as far as the first deal. What you need after that is something very, very important. And it's not money. You won't have money anyway. Not if you started like I did with nothing. All right. So, uh, and he talks about relationships in this as well. But uh, um, can you just add what you what you think in terms of the value of, uh, you know, creating solid relationships? Uh, well, now, that's one of the most important things in any business. I mean, you can't let an attitude, because an attitude will different between you making it and not making it is your attitude. Mm -hmm. Now, something you said on the, that that that, I, that really registered with me was when, uh, you know, he 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 realized he didn't know everything, mm -hmm. and he made he said he made mistakes. 
Mm, mm -hmm. But here's the thing. Mistakes give you more education than success does. Mm, mm -hmm. Every day, every day, you're supposed to ask yourself a question of what happened to me today and what did I learn from it. Mm. I don't care if it's something good mm -hmm. or something bad. You got to realize. See, he realized things that happened didn't happen to him. Mm. It happened for him. Mm -hmm. Big difference. Mm. Two, makes you a victim. Four, makes you a student. <laughs> if it happens to you, mm. then you're a victim. <laughs> but if it happens for you, yeah. then it makes you a student. You want to know what's the purpose of what happened for me. Mm -hmm. What am I getting from what happened for me? So right. it makes a difference between two and four. And yeah. quit being a two victim and become a four victim because yeah. everything yeah. happens for you. Wow, wow. All right, let me let me kind of get into a little bit of, about him. We got we got a good minute. Minutes. Uh, my first big deal made me a multimillionaire. Before that, my net worth was similar to most to that of most people. What I would, would what I could generate in wages by providing services. Okay, but I never took my eyes off the prize. It only took me a little more than half my twenties to achieve my goal of becoming a multimillionaire by age of thirty. I started in my chosen profession of real estate by becoming a residential appraiser and then a residential sales agent. I was 19 when I started. The fact that it was real estate was not important. What is important is that regardless of the business you're in, you have to learn it. And the best way to learn it is to get into the mix. I learned the business from ground zero in the trenches. There are lots of ways to go to get into the real estate business. One one way to learn is like a burn channer, a young man who now works for me, who got his MBA from Wharton. He started as an intern with us, a bright young college kid, and got his uh, foot in the door that way. That's one way to learn a business, through formal education. I didn't have the educational background. Let me just let people know this. Like, cause there's an article that is circulating uh, where um, Mr. Peebles who let me say that it, it his net worth is around $700 million according to some sources but uh, that he's talking about college education is not necessary yeah. that's that's the article right so I'm gonna come in when you finish yeah let me let me mention this here alright I didn't have the educational background also I and I also wanted to start at an early age and get into the business on the ground floor I didn't get to work in a nice environment like the one we're providing for Vern. Instead, I went to work doing home appraisals for my mother, who was a real estate professional, and then for another appraisal firm. For the most part, we did the housing appraisals and the HUD and the VA. The VA and the Veteran Affairs was more middle class. HUD was for the lower income. We would go into these areas that were really, really rough. That was in D.C., and it was the way I learned the business. Today, I have projects lots of other places around the country, including Miami, San Fran, Detroit, and Las Vegas. But it was Washington where I still I still own buildings that I hone my skills. It was Washington, too, where I learned the art of politics. All right. So um, so he was, like I said, he was a page, he was a congressional page, and then he started getting involved in Marion Burry's campaign, organizing events for him. And he said, my dick day came when I had a meet and greet for the mayor event in the party room, one of my apartment buildings. Gathering was for residents of the area uh, in Ward 3, predominantly white district, and was among the most affluent. We served freshmen, and I gave a speak and introduced him. It cost $1,000, and I got a couple other people to co-sponsor it with me. So he co-sponsored an event, uh, a fundraiser for Marion Barry. And it, and it talks a little bit, because I read this. I read all these books cover to cover. So, you know, um, I just can't recall everything, but... You know, he co-sponsored a fundraiser and got into the Burry. And, of course, you know, coming up here, Mayor Murray and Burry, you know, he created opportunities. You know, he you know I think that's where right. I met him at, through Murray and Burry, mm -hmm. at, at Murray and Burry's campaigns. And that's how I met that gentleman. But, you know, one thing he said that, that really people got to realize, the one that, he said something you read at the beginning just now that was very, very powerful. Mm -hmm. When he said... It's college education isn't necessarily necessary. Right. See, here's the thing about a formal education. Mm. A formal education may give you a job or may keep you working. Mm -hmm. But a self-education mm. will make you wealthy. Mm. 
Mm. Because people don't realize yeah, yeah. once you graduate college or high school, mm -hmm. that's when your studies and reading really began. Mm -hmm. Now, at my age, I just celebrated my 67th birthday mm -hmm. Saturday. Right. Saturday is my birthday, 67. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah. you, thank you, thank you. And, 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 and you know, man, right today, right today, I still study four hours a day. Mm. How can I teach you if I don't know? Right, right, right. See, that self-education is what gives you. And green. Because yeah. things are changing. You can't still live, do yesterday's system in today. Mm -hmm. That's like me telling you, hey, man, I want you to call me. Mm. You say, okay, man, I'm going to call you. What's your number? I say, here, man, beat me. Mm -hmm. You think I'm crazy if I tell you to beat me. <laughs> right, right, I'll be right. so out of date. Yes. Right? Yes. So mm -hmm. you have to study and learn every day. Your education begins, truly begins, once you graduate, because 80% of what you learn in school is nonviolent. Mm. Is it, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it doesn't, it, it has no value. Mm -hmm. it, you aren't going to use it. Mm -hmm. When I got into real estate and I went through this course that was hard, man, I mean, it was hard. 80% mm -hmm. of what we learned, we ne I never ever used. Only 20% mm. did I use. Wow. Same thing with your college degree. Do you mm -hmm. know that 65%? Of college graduates don't work do, in their do not work uh, in their field. <laughs> wow. Now think about this, 65%. So that means 3.5 yeah. out of every 10 people that graduate are in their field. 6.5% what, what about the, What about that other one that says that people change their careers like over 30, 40 year period, like 7 to t something, 7, 8, 10 times, something like yes. that? Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's really interesting. That's yeah, really interesting. So I mean, you know, but you you got education. Education is very important. Right, right, right. agree. Yeah, very, yeah. very. But here's the thing about it: mm -hmm. knowledge is not power. Mm. Information is not power. Mm. Only implemented information mm. and implemented knowledge is power. Implemented hashtag <laughs> implemented. Repeat that. Repeat that for everybody. Knowledge is not power. Yeah. Yeah. Education is not power. Mm -hmm. Only implemented education and knowledge is power. Mm. To know it and not use it, it has no value. Mm. Right, right. Wow, wow. That's a powerful, powerful, powerful point. Absolutely. I agree 100%. I agree 100%. So that's, that's important. So. so if you don't want to study... If you don't want to learn and make yourself grow every day, mm -hmm. keep your J-O-B. Because <laughs> if you become an entrepreneur, right. you better change with the times. Right. Because yeah. it is a technological age. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, if sir. you are not in or using technology, mm -hmm. you are five years behind someone else who is, and you will never, ever catch up. Mm. Wow. wow. You know, wow. I, just, I just saw a thing, something I tell when I'm on stage and I'm teaching. You know, where I woke up one night, it's about 10 o'clock, and I'm, I'm online trying to do something. I couldn't figure out how to do it. So I looked at my watch and I said, Dad, gone, it's 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. The person I need is sleep, you know, and I can't wake him up. So now I got to wait, wait till I wake up and wake him up in the morning to take him to kindergarten. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> right. them kids, they got it. Right, right, right. Yeah, let me, let me read a little intro. We got a couple more. My early years taught me numerous lessons, among them that you must believe in yourself, that you yes. must put yourself into the mix and you have to play politics in whatever business or industry you become involved in. Those years also taught me that it really does matter whom you know and whom you help and who helps you along the way. Relation, you just said yeah. it earlier, relationships, brother. Relationships. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do, you, what do you think about that? You know, uh, people say it's about who you know and who you, who knows you. That, that's very true. Mm -hmm. But see, now, you, you got to realize you're going to grow. I got a gentleman now that I went 20 years and didn't see. Mm. Right now, man, he's one of the most in, intricate parts of my institute. Mm. Back then, 20 years ago, we were both in two different fields. Oh, wow. And now, 20 years later, mm -hmm. his, his expertise is what I need. What I do is what he needs to help put his expertise out there. So together, man, we're a team. Mm -hmm. So you got to be relationships. You when they say never burn a bridge, because mm -hmm. you don't know when you got to go back and cross it. Mm -hmm. Someone may make you angry today, but in five years, that same person that made you angry is going to be one going to make you a millionaire. Mm -hmm. 
Ah, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, beautiful, beautiful. All right, so see, these are some of the principles that he, that uh, Peebles talk is about, talks about. Peebles' ground rules, always believe in yourself. Master your business, right? Yeah. Always believe in yourself. Master your business. Put yourself into the mix, right? Uh, protect yourself from sharks. What does what does he mean? Oh, they out there, baby. They <laughs> out there. They out there. Right, right, right. Be your own boss in your profession. <laughs> you, you know, Oprah said something one time that made a lot of sense yeah. to me, and I stuck to it, and I stuck to it, and I still mm -hmm. do today. Mm. No one signs my checks but me. Mm. I'm my boss. Right. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I am a terrible, terrible employee. <laughs> but I am one of the best bosses. Yeah. Everybody yeah. ain't meant to be. You have to learn to be. See, it, it, just how you treat people. Right. Because the better I treat my employees, the more happier they're going to be and willing to do the work. Mm -hmm. But you tick them off. Mm. And then they're going to do less. Like they say, what they say? You do more than you paid for until you get paid for more than you do. Mm. So you always do more than you pay for. Mm -hmm. Until that day comes, baby, that you're going to get paid for more than you do. And see, that's when you know you've got success. Mm. But it takes work, sacrifice. It takes sacrifices. Mm -hmm. So you, got, you, you, got, you can't be afraid of it. But you've got to look at every day and what you're learning. Because if you don't realize that you're learning... See, you got a lot of people out there that died twenty that died at the age of twenty five mm -hmm. and aren't buried until they're eighty. <laughs> you know? Right, right, right. Yeah. Yes, sir, yes, sir. All right. Uh, he said, be prepared to lose everything. Mm-hmm. And that's a for certain. That's a, that that truly is a for certain. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta gotta be prepared to go at your, your goals and your Look dreams, at your so. average millionaire out there, and I can name several mm -hmm. that have filed bank webs more times than once. Yeah. Your number 45 right, right. has filed nine times. Right, right. Uh, Walt uh, Disney, they, they filed six. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow, yeah, yes, sir. So mm -hmm. because you don't succeed today, all that's doing is preparing you for your tomorrow. Right, right, as right. As long as you look at the lesson that you learned lesson on that why, learned. that's right. what's going to... Keep, keep you going and teach you mm -hmm. are the lessons you've learned along the way. Mm. It didn't happen what? It didn't happen to you. Right. It happened for you. Right. Or you got to look and see the lesson. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's a beautiful point. Beautiful point. So let's, uh, we, we got about 20 minutes left. Let's get on to our, our last night and our final <laughs> brother here. And that's Dr. Randall Pickett. And he's done some two of his books here, Campus CEO and Black Faces in White Places. White Places. Yeah. So he's done a awesome job, and you know, tell the people who, how how most people might know him. Yes. So uh, most people may know Dr. Randall Pickett from uh, The Apprentice. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He won. Uh, well, he, yeah, he won it, and Trump tried to take it from him. Right. <laughs> told him we can't give it to you. You want it, but we can't give it to you alone. Yeah. Oh, that's he said we can't give it to you alone. To yeah, we got to have a we got we to have a co winner. Because and he, he said, and he yeah, and he and he told he Trump said, no. it's not going to happen. Right. right. He said, yeah. No, I'm a, yeah. I'm gonna stand up, and if you don't give me what I deserve, you do what I'm going to tell the world. You ain't gonna like. It. <laughs> what did he do? Right. He gave it to him. He, yeah. He, he, said, he won it. Right. But right, they right. didn't want him to. Be the black person to win it. Mm -hmm. I mean, to hear him tell that story. And you know what? The first time I met him, I was impressed. Mm -hmm. Because the brother has, has, I mean, he doesn't talk as brilliant as he is. He does not talk above you. Mm -hmm. He make it where his, his, his story and, and what he done, what happened to him, it, you know, it, it could be anybody. Mm-hmm. Right. See, it's not always the book smart that makes you. Mm -hmm. A lot of times it's the common sense and just the the, the self-taught, the studies that you do on your own that's going to be different than you making or not making it. Mm -hmm. Like that's what I tell you, a self-education will make you wealthy, where a, 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 a general education will only maybe give you a job or keep you working. <laughs> wow, 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 yeah, so... Let me, let me just, you know, and, and I, I'm, I'm beginning to encourage college students to read this, the Campus CEO book. 
because mm-hmm. uh, we got to get them ready. You know, we got to get them in the right mindset and, you know, have an attitude. Even, you know, if, for instance, you don't necessarily gain all the skills in college, but you, you got to get into that mindset early so that uh, you don't um, come out per se and, and feel lost, you know, because that's what's going on. So, um, so yeah, so Dr. Randall Pickett, um, actually Earl Graves mentioned this. I mean, signed this book for him, and he said, because the campus CEO is a reflection of my life and lives of, it represents more than a book to me. It's tribute to the noteworthy efforts of countless men and women who contributed both directly and indirectly to its content and its ethos. So while I recognize several of these individuals below, these acknowledgments about affection of all of you. So you do a little acknowledgement and then a, uh, then about the author, BCT, CEO of BCT, which is in New Jersey. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, so several different degrees in uh, electrical engineering and, and computer technology. So, um, yeah, go ahead. You, you know, now, we, we've talked about three books today, and people say, well, I've never heard of these people. I don't know who they are. And I'm not getting cruel or mean to nobody, but, but you know, ignorance is a choice. Mm. Mm. It's a choice. Mm. Wow. With the Internet today and yeah. with Google, ignorance is a choice. Wow. Because you can go on, online mm-hmm. and, pick, and go to YouTube right. and study and listen to these great people because they're there. Yeah, yeah. Don't yes, tell so. me. people. Now, here's what a lady said to me one time. I was on stage trying to embarrass me. <laughs> she said, why should we believe you? How do you know all of this stuff? <laughs> so I looked at her and I told her, I said, I tell you what, the question that you asked me was backwards. Mm-hmm. You asked me, why do, how do I know all this stuff? Mm-hmm. The question should be, how come you don't? Mm. Wow. Right. Mm-hmm. Don't ask me how I know. And what I want you to do, anything I'm telling you, when I, I'm going to say teaching, whenever I'm teaching, I always tell you, don't believe nothing I say. Mm-hmm. Go out there and prove me wrong. Mm. Right, study right. to prove me wrong because in your studies trying to prove me wrong, you're going to get a greater education than I could have given you because what you got to study and what you're going to learn trying to prove me wrong is going to be beyond what I got the time to teach you in the period of time that you're before me. Mm-hmm. So like I say, don't believe what I say. Mm. Welcome to your research and <laughs> prove me wrong. Right. Just, right. To pr- just to prove to yourself that I was right all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Let me just read some of these chapters here that, that he has. So part one is starting your business. All cramp all cap all campuses are not created equal. That's what he calls it. Yes. What business should you launch and when? Put it on paper, creating a powerful business plan, structure, support success, laying a strong foundation, high tech and low cost gaining the technology edge. I mean, talk about financing, show me the money, raising capital, financial statements 101, understand the basic of finance. Uh, let me get to part three here. Balancing business and education for those that, I mean, because I, I feel like whether you're in school or not, uh, you should be taking time out for learning. Oh, no know, doubt. And, and, and really reading uh, as well as sitting, you know, personal reflecting on on what uh, what your skills are and, and how you, for instance, have uh, positioned yourself, you know, and and and, and what your uh, your swats, your, your your opportunities, your strengths, you know, your threats, streak, what is it, uh, swat, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. What's your opportunities mm-hmm. uh, that that you can uh, take? Full advantage of so um, that's that's important. So um, let me let me now let you see. Something. You know, I I, I, I love that okay. that saying you got on your shirts, and people don't realize how powerful what you. Yeah, yeah. those three words success are about leaves success clues. Right. leaves <laughs> clues. Yeah, yeah, indeed, indeed. But thing is, so does failure. Mm, wow. Mm, yeah. Because you cannot get to the bridge. I mean, get to the avenue of success. Until you a few times cross that bridge of failure, baby. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. Amen. And Amen. see, Amen. people don't realize failure. See, failure is not who you are. Mm. Failure is not who you are. It's yeah. only an event. Just like wow, yesterday. Wow. Yeah. It's only yeah. passing through, baby. It ain't here to stay. Mm-hmm. 
right, right. It's just it's just passing through. Mm, mm-hmm. So if you don't succeed in something, it's not going to be there forever. It's just passing through. Right, and right, God right. is that's the way God wants you to learn that lesson that He gave you from where you didn't reach that plateau that you were seeking. Mm-hmm. Look at it. Yeah. Yes, and yes, realize yes. it's a lesson. Yes, yes you know yes. you don't tell you don't ask yourself why, mm-hmm. why me, why me. The question you ask yourself is why not me? Mm-hmm. Why did God give me this problem, this issue, or this failure at this moment? Mm-hmm. Because that's the lesson that God wants you to learn that He sees that's going to benefit you in your future. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. I say. All right, so part four. Um, I think I'm going to... Well, I'm sorry. Part three. Balance business and education. Building a winning team. Tapping a brilliant workforce. That's what I'm doing. Working with some of the Bowie students now. <laughs> Take it. It's yours. Leveraging campus resources. Man, I got to get... This young guy, I got to get this book. He ain't get it yet, but... Type A. Maintaining good grades and a healthy focus. Networking. Works profiting from professors and mentors. So I got to get him. Something he said on that was very powerful. When he said, "What's that about business and and and, and business and and and, and uh, education?" Ed, no, no, right here. What you just read? Something about business and tapping, maintaining good grade. Oh, that, that. B- yeah, balancing business and balancing education. business education and education. Right now, that's saying that you know you got to take time to do your business, right? But you also got to take time to study. Yeah. Yes, yes. You yes. gotta take time to learn. Mm-hmm. You, you, if, if you're just gonna do your business and don't take time to study to learn how to improve your business, right? You're gonna stay right where you are. Right, right, right. And that's where I, that's where I am. I'm I'm really you know evaluating, you know, just just where you know I am in terms of knowing. For instance, I mean, reading these books, you know, I mean, are, are great, you know, but it's, but it's like okay, well. Well, implementing it next yeah yeah and, and the tangibilities you yes. know understanding for instance you know there, there's the, the supply and demand i mean you know you only can fit into certain areas and sometimes i was just reading lisa nichols you know book the abundance okay I'm, now, i haven't gotten to that one yet you know yeah oh man this is my first one i haven't read any of hers but this is the first one of hers i read but you know she talked about the benefits of, of having a multiple income stream. And I, you know, I, I yes. always just kind of put, for instance, um, business, you know, in the same category. But but she kind of put it like, okay, although you may have a business, you still can make money doing the other yeah, things. I mean, yeah, that's all saying. Because you got you to gotta eat. Right. You got to eat. Right, right, right. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes. But here's the thing about yeah. Here's something about uh, brother about you that I I really admire. Mm -hmm. You know, people say, "Well, I read all time." This place, I read two or three books a a, a month. Yeah, but she loves to read murder novels and love (laughs) my novels and magazines. Right, right, right. It's not that you read. Right. It's what you read. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Now look at what you read. Yes, yes. Agree. Right, and and you always putting knowledge. Mm-hmm. Someone else's knowledge mm-hmm. in your mind. Mm. You know, I, I teach one of the things, and they were teaching me the other night because they, they they roasted me the other night. They talked about <laughs> it, man, and I loved every second of it. But you know, they they were talking about where I teach BDI, which is borrow, duplicate, mm. and improve upon to fit your situation. Mm-hmm. You 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 aren't. The, you know, the only one is doing what you're doing. Mm-hmm. So you borrow what someone else did, mm. and then you duplicate it, mm. and then you improve mm. upon to fit how you want to do it. Mm. I'm not the first one to teach, right, like right, I teach. Right, right. I borrow from watching other people and I listen. Yes, yes. Sure. See, yes, the sure. only time I'm an educator is when I'm on stage. Outside of that, I'm a student. Mm. Mm. Wow, wow, uh, wow. That's powerful, powerful, powerful point. Powerful point. So, so look at what you read, my brother, yeah, and look absolutely. at where it's taking you. Yeah, I mean, see, yeah. you, you, you're, you're still yet somewhat young, <laughs> you know, right, but, right, and, right. and you are. Yeah, yes, sir, yes, sir. But you, you, you're preparing yourself for when you get into your senior years, mm-hmm. you will be considered a very, very wise man. Right, right, right. right. See, wisdom comes with age. There is no such thing as a person being wise at 30, 40, and 50 years old. <laughs> wisdom comes with age. Right, right, See, it right. comes with experience. Mm-hmm. 
Experience gives you wisdom. Yeah. And you cannot get but so much experience until you have lived. Mm, right, right. Great. Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome point. Awesome point. Yeah. So we uh, we got about 10 more minutes, and this is uh, Dr. Randall Pickett's, I don't know if it's his final. He's working on some other. Oh, he's always going. Yeah, he's he, 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 that brother. Major things, but black faces and white places. Um, and you definitely can get these books, but, um, and let me just really quickly go through some of the chapters here. Um, <laughs> intro, and he talks about not getting trumped. Nash, uh, Randall's national, <laughs> nationally televised black faces in white places yes. moment. <laughs> yeah, that was when he was on The Apprentice. Right, right, right. All right, the four he calls it the four dimensions of black faces in white places. All right, next a roadmap for redefining the game and reshaping America. Uh, Ten game changing, game changing strategies to achieve success and find greatness. Uh, the learning game, America story, United States and race. The learning game. I'm sorry, learning, the learning the game. That's the chapter. Learning what the game is about. Most definitely important. You yes. better learn the game. Establish a strong identity and purpose. Wow. Yeah. You gotta know your purpose. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, you gotta look at it and realize that your whole life is a purpose. Mm -hmm. And you've got to grow more and more into the purpose that is going to best suit you and serve, serve the world. But mm -hmm. well, see, when you live your purpose, it's not for you. Mm -hmm. It's for those that enter your life space, and that's what gives you your success. Those who you help, see, everything, your business is not going to grow and be until your business has value that it gives other people value. You can't sell somebody something. They don't go buy your product. They don't see no value in it. Mm -hmm. Would you go buy a size 8 shoe if you wore a 10? <laughs> right. <laughs> that 8 yeah. shoe has no value to you because you need a 10. Right, right, right. So that's what it boils down to, the value. You, you, your, your business has to give people value. Don't mm. ask yourself, well, why come nobody's buying? How are you selling it? Are you showing them the value? Mm. Wow. You know, that's one of the first things that happened to me when I started vending, man, I went and bought this band and went and bought all this stuff. And I said, oh, man, they go, they go buy this. I like this. I like this. I like this. Mm -hmm. And then I learned something when it wasn't selling. <laughs> I bought what I like, not what the, not what, not what the public wanted. Mm. Mm-hmm. So you've got to put out there what they want. You got to give make them give them value. Mm. And you have to learn how to sell. And here's the thing too. If and the hardest thing that most entrepreneurs, well, I can't be on stage speaking. I got news for mm -hmm. you. If you are an entrepreneur, right, you are a public speaker because yeah. you are broke per, or you're a broke <laughs> entrepreneur. Right, right, right. <laughs> you're yeah. a public speaker. If you got if you're an entrepreneur, you better know how to speak to the public. Right. Yes. You can't sell something that if you can't talk. Right. Yes. 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 A closed mouth and a closed mind will fed. never get fed. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yes. It did. It did. And I yeah. they tease me and I laugh and stuff because I like I tell them I've never seen a mic. That mm. I didn't like. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. So that's good, yeah. So that's that's good. I mean, so Dr. Randall Pickett, I mean, he's doing, and it, he has some partners in place with uh, BCT. He's doing some awesome things. Oh, let me get to uh, identity, purpose, identity and purpose for African Americans. Um, Self determination. Your identity as an asset and your purpose as the source of power. And next, interdependent strategies of one and two. Interdependent strategies. Speak, speak about, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, many people talk about being self-determined, you know, for instance. But I, I use the example of, you know, take, for instance, the hurricanes. And, and you know, it's unfortunate what has happened. But and we can, only, we can do but so much preparation in, in, in life. But... And, and George Frazier, he always, you know, adds on to that about the story of, of Jesus and, and, and how, um, what did he say? He says, um, he said, I couldn't do it by myself. Something, I can't recall. But, but he used the understanding that we must work through each other. There's no such thing as, you know, you're not an island. 
you know, you're going to need a team, you know, the mastermind group. You, Thank you, Rich. Yes. Yeah. You, you, you know, one of my favorite songs is yeah. sung by, uh, can't think of her name now, who sings uh, People Who Need People. Barbara Streisand okay. sings the song People <laughs> okay. Who Need People uh, Are the Luckiest People in the World. Mm, mm. Once you realize you can't do it alone, yeah, yes, sir, yes, sir. Because if you think you can do it alone, go out there and 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 don't sell nothing because you didn't because you thought you could do it by yourself. Mm. You can't support you. You can't buy your inventory enough to make you successful. Mm -hmm. So people who need people and realize it are the luckiest people in the world. Mm. Wow! 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 This has been phenomenal, phenomenal conversation. Everybody, thank everybody for tuning in, brother Dwayne. Can I tell them about Janelle. my book? You talking oh about yeah, no, we, we going we gonna, we gonna get you, <laughs> we gonna let you plug, brother Sylvia Queen. Thank you, honey. Uh, Sister Navita, uh, Sister da Dominica, Carla, Latoya, Frankie, brother Keith, Melissa, Tanika, my cousin chimed in. Thank you, brother Jamar, Sharita, Q, Q Love. Uh, and, we want, uh, and, and we want y'all to share this. Hit share. Hit share, y'all. Share this out. Hit share, because that way you, you're helping this brother yeah, get his show out there. I ain't even and and then you're yeah. showing the world my brilliance. Hey, man, I'm not, you know. But you got y'all got to share this, because every time you give a blessing, life will yes. give you tenfold. Mm. And mm, when you hit the button share, life owes you tenfold, and you're going to get it. Yes, yes. So go ahead, go ahead and plug away, bro. Oh, so you know, uh, y'all know I'm the president of Millionaire Mastermind Institute, and I've also written a book called Climbing Success Mountain mm -hmm. because you know that your life is a mountain to climb. Mm -hmm. And it's called Climbing Success Mountain, and you can get it. Go to mminstitute.info. It's there. So Climbing Success Mountain, written by William Murray, and, and find out. It's about you. There's only two characters in the book. You... And Mr. Success. Mm. And you will find out why you are the most important person in there along with Mr. Success. And that's the reason I wrote it in, in, in the person that is you. If you because your life is like is like a book. Mm -hmm. You just got to what it is, your life is like a book. You have to make it interesting and a top seller. Mm. So your life is like a book. Just do chapter, cha page, page, chapter. So that's how you gotta look at it. All right, all right. So, yeah. All right, brother. You gave out your website? Oh, www.mminstitute.info. All right. Or call the Institute at 240-619-2019. And as of yesterday, my Institute has moved from Laurel to Washington, Southeast, Washington, D.C. Yes, yes, so yes. you'll get more information when you go online. All right, all right. my Facebook page. Beautiful, beautiful. Yep. All right. Thanks, everybody. Haki Ami, the Success Scholar. Look me up on YouTube, Twitter, all of it, Instagram, Success Scholar, Success Scholar 1 on several of them. Holla. I'm Thank out. you, my brother, and God Thank bless you. Thank you. Pleasure, man.